All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining us on this program. This is part two of our lesson, Origins of Easter, Pagan Idolatry. Origins of Easter, Pagan Idolatry. Idolatry. Now, what we did in the first one is we addressed why do we observe Easter. And if we're going to indeed observe Easter, let's go behind it. Let's go look at the history. Let's go see where it came from. So if you haven't seen the first part, I would encourage you to see part one of Origins of Easter, Pagan Idolatry. And I titled that because that is exactly what it is. I'm sorry if it stepped on some people's toes, but as I said in the first lesson, if you are observing Easter, you did not come to that conclusion reading the Bible. You got it solely from tradition, meaning it was handed down to you. OK, so we start looking at where Easter came from and we looked at Estarde and Estra and Ishtar and Tammuz and the Queen of Heaven. So look at the first lesson and you will see that you have to investigate. Even the Bible says study to show thyself approved. So you want to look into some of these things. You need to ask yourself, well, why am I doing this? Now, some things that you do, you might investigate and you see why you do it and it's good. And you say, okay, all right, well now at least I know why I'm doing what I'm doing, okay? Some things you might investigate and you find out it is bad and you need to discontinue from that particular work, okay? So let's go over to Acts 17, brother. Go to Acts 17 for me real quick. We're just going to read one verse there. We're going to read these first three just to kind of set up our lesson, part two. So Acts 17, 23. Acts 17 and 20, verse 23. Okay, now this is uh, Paul when he goes up to Mars Hill. So we wanna talk about something real quick. We're gonna let this set us up. One verse, Acts 17 and 23, and when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, mm -hmm. I found an altar with this inscription, mm -hmm. To the unknown God, mm -hmm. whom therefore ye ignor ignorantly worship him, mm -hmm. declare I unto you. Yeah, see, that's us, okay? So I wanted to set that up. Now go to Zechariah, okay, 10. Now, because this is the unknown God. This is what I'm talking about. See, this God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who some call Yahweh, some, some refer to as the Most High, Okay, this is what we got to understand. And even others, Yahuwah. This is what I understand. This is the God that we need to address. This is the God who don't want you to worship any other God. This is what we're talking about. I, uh, Zechariah chapter 10, brother. Verse 1. Zechariah chapter 10. Yes, verse 1. 10 and 1. Ask ye of the Lord, reign in the time of the latter reign. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. Mm -hmm. For the idols have spoken vanity, and the, 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 vinegar, the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams. Mm -hmm. They comfort in vain, therefore they went their way as a flock. Mm -hmm. there, they were troubled mm -hmm. because there was no shepherd. Because there was no shepherd. That's what we need to understand. We are gone astray. Because tradition has been handed down to us, and then it, was, it has been tempered. Uh, they've been died by mortar by these pastors who perpetuate the same thing. They just say, hey, yeah, this Easter, and they have all these specials and all this other stuff. So you think it's okay. First, it was handed down to your parents from mom or grand, uh, grandparents or whatever, and then you go to church, and they perpetuate the same thing. Why? Because you don't have a true shepherd. These pastors out there, if they're not teaching according to scripture, there's no light in them. If they don't speak to the law and the testimony, there is no light in them. They're not giving you the truth. If they don't give it to you right out of the Bible, ask them, show me Easter celebration in the Bible. Not just show me the word Easter, show me Easter celebration, Easter observance in the Bible, and then show me the instructions thereof, because if it's in there, then show me how to observe it the right way. That's a fair question, isn't it? Yep. That's pretty fair. You want me to do it? Okay. Let me see the Bible say I need to do it and then show me the right way. Where is the Bible gives me the instruction? Show me that. But we don't do that. Go to uh, 
Jeremiah 16 real quick. Okay, we're jumping around a little bit. We're, we're, we're going to be scripture heavy this time, whereas the, le the last lesson we didn't have much time to get into a lot of scripture because we were trying to straighten out and investigate this whole Easter thing. We spent a lot of time investigating that, so let's take a look. Okay, I want to go to Jeremiah 16. Okay, and when we get to Jeremiah uh, 16, read verse 20. Shall a man make gods unto himself, mm -hmm. and they are no gods? Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. Can we just do what we want? Can we just make gods to ourselves? Can we just make a graven image and start bowing it? Can we just go ahead and put together a golden calf and start bowing to it? Can we go ahead and make some Jesus portraits and stuff and start bowing to it? Can we make statues of uh, Mary and um, start bowing to that and stuff? Should we be, I mean, should we do any of this stuff? That is not a god. Okay. That is not a God. Read 21, brother. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will this once cause them to know. Mm -hmm. I will cause them to know my hand and my might, mm -hmm. and they shall know that my name is the Lord. See, here's the thing, okay? He, throughout the scriptures, if you read the scriptures, he proves, him, he didn't have to, but the Lord proves himself over and over and over and over again, and he, he's asking you, okay, trust me, listen to me, obey me, hearken unto my voice, me, me, okay? Trying to get us to serve the right God. Is that not true? You read that throughout the whole Bible. That's what he's trying to do. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, obey me, obey me, follow me, follow me. That's all he does, and we're not doing it. Somehow it was follow me, follow me, no graven images, no other gods, all this, and they led us up into the Easter Bunny. How did that happen? How did that happen? I have no idea where that comes. I just don't get it. So go to Isaiah, brother. We're going to go there for a second. One book back. Go to Isaiah. Isaiah 48. Isaiah 48. Don't get mad. See, you know, instead of getting mad at me because I'm telling you the truth, why don't you get mad at the person who lied to you in the first place? I'm just reading it out of here. I didn't write it myself. I'm just reading, I'm just trying to rightly divide the word of truth. And so far, I think you all agree, we're just reading it out of there. We didn't really make any leaps. We're talking about idolatry. I'm still talking about idolatry. We're talking about serving the right God. We're, I'm still talking about serving the right God. So let's go to Isaiah 48. And when you get there, brother, pick it up at verse 1. We're going to stay here for a second. We're going to read a number of these verses. 48 and verse 1. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. Hear ye this, O house of Jacob, uh -huh. which are called by the name of Israel, mm -hmm. and are come forth out of the waters of Judah, which swear by, by the name of the Lord, uh -huh. and make mention of the God of Israel, yes. but not in truth, mm -hmm. nor in righteousness. Okay, so they talk about it. They, oh, they know about this God, but not in truth, not in righteousness. Go ahead. For they call themselves of the holy city, mm -hmm. and stay themselves upon the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts is his name. Go ahead, brother. I have declared the former things from the beginning, mm -hmm. and they went forth out of my mouth, mm -hmm. and I showed them. I did them suddenly, and they came to pass. Yeah, I said it. I did it. It happened right there. Just to prove my, this is what the Lord did. He, he just to prove himself. He, I said it. Boom, it happened. I mean, you would think that should be enough to believe. You would think. Go ahead, brother. Because I knew that thou art obstinate, and oh. thy neck is, mm -hmm. an, uh, is an iron of sinew, mm -hmm. and thy brow brass. It means you are hard-headed, stiff-necked, and stubborn. That's what it means. Hard-headed, stiff. He can show you a miracle, and you still don't believe it. He can split the sea, and you still doubt him. He can get water out of a rock, you still doubt him. He Fire rained out of, out of heaven in front of you, you still doubt him. What is wrong with us that we cannot serve the God who he proves himself over and over and over? This is our forefathers, this, them not listening. Go ahead, brother. I have even from the beginning declared it to thee. Mm -hmm. Before it came to pass, I showed it, I mm -hmm. showed it thee. Mm -hmm. Lest thou shouldst say, mine idol hath done them. I did it, so you can't say your idol did it. That's why I did it. I did it, so you can't say that idol, this graven image, any, you, in this case, Ishtar didn't do this for you. Go ahead. And my graven image, mm -hmm. and my molten image, hath commanded them. Mm -hmm. 
Thou has heard, see all this, mm -hmm. and will not ye declare it? Yep. I have showed thee new things from this time, mm -hmm. even hidden things, mm -hmm. and thou didst not know them. Yeah, I showed you stuff you didn't even know. I showed you stuff you didn't know. Ishtar didn't tell you. Queen of Heaven line was busy. I showed you this. Go ahead. They are created now mm -hmm. and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, mm -hmm. lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I knew them. Somebody, oh, I already knew. You didn't already know. You didn't already know. I showed this to you. You didn't already know. Quit fooling yourself. Go ahead, brother. Yea, thou heardest not. Mm -hmm. Yea, thou heardest not. Now thou knewest not. You didn't know. Go ahead. Yea, from that from that time that thine ear was not open, mm -hmm. for I knew that thou wouldest deal very treacherously, mm -hmm. and would was called a transgressor from the womb. You was called a transgressor from the womb. I'm gonna tell you something that you know the stiff neck, the hard head, the rebellion, or whatever. How many people in this room tried to tell a friend, family, colleague? the truth and they just rejected you oh brother you read into it oh that's your interpretation sister no that's just you know that's just tradition that's just what 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 are, what are the other excuses come on come on with it what what else you hear yeah yeah just leave people alone thou shalt not judge brother don't judge what else y'all what, what else y'all heard come on what what's that you heard yeah how can we all yeah i know you're right but i was just raised yeah yeah and what and what and what's the number one? God knows my what? Uh huh. That is so dangerous. Wicked in DC. Yeah, he yeah he know your wicked heart. You're right. You're right. He does. He know your wicked heart, and you don't want to listen. Yes, he knows that. Where are we? Verse eight, brother nine. Nine. Go ahead. For my name's sake will mm -hmm. I defer mine anger. Yep. And for my praise will I refrain for thee, mm -hmm. that I cut thee not off. See, I'm gonna show you a little. Mer this mercy right here, right? For my name's sake will I defer, y'all need to put off, mine anger. And for my praise will I refrain from, uh, for thee, for your sake, that I cut thee not off. I won't kill you, okay? But go ahead, 10. Behold, I have refi refined thee, mm -hmm. but not with silver. Yep. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Okay, we already know the story of the Israelites, and we already know about Deuteronomy 28. We know about Jeremiah and Isaiah. So we know about all these curses. So he did, he did chose them out of affliction. You know about they were in bondage in Egypt. You know all this. He did choose them out of affliction. Okay, he said, I, oh, I didn't do it with silver. Okay, I chose you out of the furnace of affliction, 11. For my own sake, mm -hmm. even for mine own sake, yep. will I do it. Yep. For how should my name be polluted? Mm -hmm. And I will not give my glory unto another. I will not give my glory unto another. So put the dye away, okay? <laughs> put the eggs away and put the bunnies away. He's not going to give his glory to Ishtar. Go ahead. Hearken unto me, O Jacob mm -hmm. and Israel. Mm -hmm. My called, I am he. Yep. I am the first. Yep. I am also the last. That sounds familiar if you go to Revelation, doesn't it? No. I'm the first and the last. You would think you were in Revelation just now, but we're not. We're in Isaiah. But in Revelation, it says, I'm the first and the last. Wait, 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 wait. If right here it's saying, hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my, my called, my chosen. I am he. I am the first and I am the last. And then Christ in the Revelation saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. We're talking about the same God, huh? Interesting. Okay, now we learned something on our way to learning something, but that's okay. That's okay. Let's keep on. Yeah, let, let, let's keep let's keep pushing because this 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 is crazy. Now, people are like, well, it's different. You know, the New Testament and stuff. I want to go to one spot because we talking about idolatry. So go to First Corinthians real quick. First Corinthians, and then we'll get back to the Old Testament too. Hey Robert, can yes. I, I was gonna say, can I read that the next thirteen because. Then they know that Jesus created everything. Can I read the, the Okay, verse? read 13, brother. Mine hand also had laid the foundation of the earth. Really? And my right hand had spanned the heavens. Mm -hmm. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Is that so? And they said nothing was created without Christ. In the New Testament, nothing was created without him, and by him everything was created. New Testament. So are we talking about the same God? Same Jesus. And I'm glad, and I'm glad you're talking, in the old and the new, and I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up, okay? Because what we have to understand is it, 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 because in the New Testament, the Old Testament, 
is revealed. In the Old Testament, the New Testament is concealed. Okay? The New Testament is in the Old Testament. Okay? It's there. Okay? It's just concealed. Because when he talk about in Jeremiah, you know, the new covenant I'm going to make and all that. And what happens in the New Testament? The New Testament, the new covenant comes out in <laughs> Hebrews. Okay? So it's all there. It all goes together. That's what we have to understand. It all goes together. Go to 1 Corinthians 10. Okay? Because we've been talking about idolatry all this time. So go to 1 Corinthians 10, and we're going to read one verse. Okay? All right, so we're going to go to 1 Corinthians 10. All right, and I know, I know we're all, you know what, start at verse 13, because I know everyone is tempted with this, because, you know, your family might ostracize you, and, hey, we've been doing this, and this is our tradition, and all that stuff. I know that might happen, but read verse 13 for me. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, brother, go ahead. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Yes. But God is faithful, mm -hmm. who will not suffer you to mm -hmm. be tempted above uh -huh. that you are able, mm -hmm. but will... But will the with the temptation also make mm -hmm. a way to escape mm -hmm. that you may able be able to bear it? Okay, now that's the temptation because it is tempting to go to you know family's house and go ahead and have some uh, some good honey ham. Okay, it, it it can be pretty tempting when you're new to it. Okay, when you've been in for a little while, ain't that tempting? You're like ah, no, I don't want none of that. Okay, but for people who are new trying to understand this, it can be pretty tempting. But let's see what he say in verse 14. Go ahead, brother. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, uh -huh. flee from idolatry. In the New Testament, it said flee from idolatry? We're not supposed to be idolatrous? What book, are we, what, what book did we just read this in? What? First Corinthians? Yes. New Testament? Yes. Flee from idolatry? And idolatry is defined in the Old Testament. You don't get to invent a new definition of idolatry. Okay, worshiping, honoring, paying respects, all that commemorating other gods other than the God of Israel is idolatry. Yeah, it's for the children. Yeah, to placate your children and make them. You teach your kids idolatry. Not a child. And there's women in this room and there's women watching. Not one single child came out of your womb saying Merry Christmas and Happy Easter. <laughs> so don't try to give me that. Okay, it's not for the children. OK, if the children learn idolatry, it's from you, mom and dad and grandma. Because you were the children one time. Exactly. So it, it's from you. And even the Bible say, raise up a child and teach them in a way that they should go. So when they get older, they won't depart from it. Amen. Amen. That's it. In the way they should go. So should they go the way of idolatry? So don't teach them that. If they choose to do it when they get older, that's on them. OK, that's on them. But as long as they're under your roof, you say, look, we don't do that stuff. We're not going to do that. So let's let, 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 let's keep going, brothers. Let's keep going. Let's go on over. Um, we're in the New Testament. Go to um, Colossians three. I'll give them a little bit more New Testament. Colossians three. OK, and we're going to start at verse one. Colossians three and verse one. OK. Let's look at some more. Okay, Colossians 3, verse 1. And when you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, uh -huh. where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Yes, he does. Set your affection on things above. That's what we should be focusing on. Set your things, set your affections on things above. Uh-huh. Not on things on the earth. Uh-huh. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Yes. With Christ who is our life, mm -hmm. shall appear, mm -hmm. then shall you also appear with him in glory. Yes. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Yes, Forn mortify all this. And this is what he's going to tell you to mortify. Go ahead, brother. Fornication. Mortify that. Un so guess what? You don't get to just test the waters with each other, okay? It's about a commitment. You can't just test the waters, okay? You don't just, let me just go ahead and dip my pinky toe in and see if I like this person, meaning going into that bedroom. No, you don't get to do that, Okay. You don't get to test it out in the bedroom, okay? You get to test it out when you talk to them, ask a bunch of questions, yep. all right? That's how you find out. So no fornication, which Un is casual sex, which is, you know, casual sex, no commitment. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Check Leviticus. Go ahead. Hmm. Go Inordinate ahead. affection. Inordinate, improper affection. Hmm. 
We know what that is. Go ahead. Evil. Uh huh. Con- Concupiscence uh-huh. and covetousness. You know thou shalt not covet, so go ahead. Which is idolatry. Which is what? Idolatry. So again, we cannot have idolatry. Again, we cannot have idolatry. Verse 6. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh uh-huh. on the children of disobedience. Whoa, 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 whoa. The wrath of God comes on the children of who? Children of disobedience. So that ought to tell us something. Mm-hmm. Obey what? The law. Interesting. Verse 1 says, you know, thou shalt not have any gods before me, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Interesting. That is interesting. So we have to, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, that's what we have to do. Now, if you want to, uh, all right, so we do have to change. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and read 7, brother. Go ahead and read 7 and 8. Go ahead. In the which ye also walked some time. When you lived in them. Okay, because we used to do these things, right? We used to do our Christmas and our Easter and eat our ham and all that. We couldn't wait for the Mac rib to come out. But go ahead. <laughs> mm-hmm. But now you also put off all these. Mm-hmm. Anger, yep. wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Go ahead. Lie not one to another, yep. seeing that ye have put off the old, ma- old man with his deeds. Go ahead. And have put on the new man, mm-hmm. which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That's how we're renewed, brothers and sisters. Now it's new. Put off those things. Okay? Because there's people out there celebrate Easter and never step foot in church. Okay? Some people. Hey, Some people, yeah. They celebrate Easter and never did go to church. Okay? So you, so you can't say you were doing it right the whole time. You were doing it wrong. Whether you're in the church or out of church, you can't do this idolatrous practices. You can't do that. We got to put on the new man. That's what we're talking about, brothers and sisters. So, okay, we got Colossians. We got Corinthians. All right. Let's go to Isaiah 44 real quick. We go Old Testament, New Testament. Here a little and there a little. Isaiah 44. Isaiah 44. Okay, Isaiah 44, you're, you're in 44, brother? Yes, sir. Okay, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. Verse 9, Isaiah 44 and 9. When you get there, brother, proceed. They that make a graven image all, are all of them vanity. Go ahead. And their delectable things shall not profit. Yes. And they are their own witnesses. Mm-hmm. They see not nor know. Mm-hmm. That they may be ashamed. Go ahead, brother. Who hath formed a God or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? This nothing. So your statues and your pictures and your crosses on your neck, just stop it. It's for nothing. Go ahead. Behold, all his fellows shall be ashamed, Mm -hmm. and the workmen, they are of men. Mm -hmm. Let them all be gathered together. Mm -hmm. Let them stand up, Mm -hmm. yet they shall fear, and they shall be ashamed together. Go ahead. The smith with the tongs both worketh in the in the coals mm-hmm. and fashioneth it with hammers yep. and worketh with the strength of his arms. Mm-hmm. Yea, he is hungry mm-hmm. and his strength faileth. Mm-hmm. He drinketh no water and is faint. Go ahead, brother. The carpenter stretcheth out his rule. Mm-hmm. He marketh it out with a line. He fitteth it mm-hmm. with planes and he marketh it. Out with the compass mm-hmm. and making it after the fig- figure of a man, mm-hmm. according to the beauty of a man, yep. that it may remain in the house. So he's making his own God. He's that, fashioning everything. That, 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 blue eye. that that's the one. That, that that's the one. That's the one he's talking about. Yeah, that's the one. That, the, the, you know, the one who, uh, in the region of the world where historically everybody was pretty pretty darn dark, but all I can say is that if you know if you need suntan lotion to be over there, maybe you're not from there. Okay. So I'm um, so so we're gonna keep moving. Let's let's keep moving. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead, bro. Fourteen. He, he heweth him down cedars mm-hmm. and taketh the cypress mm-hmm. and the oak, which he strengthened mm-hmm. for himself among the trees of the forest. Mm-hmm. He planted an ash mm-hmm. and the rain doth nourish it. Okay, so th- I mean this is all we're talking about. It's not about hate, it's about truth. We're just reading it. Right? It's not about hate, it's about truth. Go ahead, fifteen, brother. Then shall it be for a man to burn, mm-hmm. for he will take thereof and warm himself. Mm-hmm. Yea, he kindleth and baketh bread. Yea, 
he make it a God mm -hmm. and worship it. Now, now we definitely talking about idolatry now. He bake it bread, he make it a God, and he worship it. So go ahead, brother. He make it a graven image mm -hmm. and falleth down there too. And he's going to bow down in front of it. Come on, brother. He burneth part thereof in the fire. Mm -hmm. With part thereof he eateth flesh. Uh -huh. He roasteth roast and is satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yea, he warmeth himself and said, Aha, mm -hmm. I am warm. I have seen the fire. Man, this guy really taking care of me. The God he just built. But this guy really taking care of me. He take, man, I, I like this guy. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh -oh. And the residue thereof, <laughs> he maketh a god, uh -huh. even his graven image, uh -huh. he falleth down unto it, mm -hmm. and worshipeth it, mm -hmm. and prayeth unto it, and saith, mm -hmm. Deliver me, for thou art my god. A god he just finished building, he created, it, but he he created it, and said, You are my god, deliver me. You have, you have got to be kidding me. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is his God, but he created it. I don't want a God I can create. I don't want to worship a God I can create. He's not very powerful. I got... ah, 18, brother. 18, brother. This is plus. Go ahead. They have not known nor understood, mm -hmm. for he has shut their eyes mm -hmm. that they cannot see, mm -hmm. and their hearts that they cannot understand. Trust me, they don't understand. Go ahead. And none considereth in his heart. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I know. This is crazy. It man. is crazy. It's, it's insane. It's insane. Go ahead. And none considereth in his heart. Uh -huh. Neither is there knowledge nor understanding to say, uh -huh. I have burned part of it in the fire. Mm -hmm. Yea. Also, I have baked bread upon the coals thereof. Mm -hmm. I have roasted flesh and mm -hmm. eaten it. Yep. And shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? That was a question. Shall I make the residue thereof an abomination? Go ahead. Shall I fall down to the stock of a tree? <sighs> we do it all the time. Go ahead. 20. He feedeth on ashes. Mm -hmm. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, mm -hmm. that he cannot deliver his soul, mm -hmm. nor say, mm -hmm. Is there not a lie in my right hand? I'm he cannot do this, brothers and sisters. This is just cr uh, 21. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, mm -hmm. for thou art my servant. Mm -hmm. I have formed thee. Mm -hmm. Thou art my servant, mm -hmm. O Israel. Thou shalt not be forgotten of me. Okay, so the Lord said, look, I have formed you. You are my servant. Okay, the God of Israel, I formed you. Not like the God in the, in, in the scriptures above that, who made his God, didn't ask the same God he just created out of his hands, deliver me. You're my God, deliver me. This is just backwards right here, brother. This is, ah, uh, this is, but this is another thing. Verse 22 is another thing that the, that the false God cannot do. Read 22, brother. I have blotted out mm -hmm. as a thick cloud mm -hmm. thy transgressions, mm -hmm. and as a cloud thy sins uh -huh. return unto me, mm -hmm. for I have redeemed thee. Oh, and by the way, Jesus. in the New Testament, where they, where they like to go and say, oh, well, see, we don't got to do the law. We don't got to do anything because he blotted it all out. This is what he blotted out. Your sins and your transgressions. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a thick cloud thy sins. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Did not Christ redeem you when he, when he was resurrected, didn't, when he died? Yes. Okay. He didn't redeem you from obedience. He redeemed you from disobedience. Yep. So he had to blot out your sins. If he wants to present you, if he wants to make you part of his family and then introduce you to the father who doesn't deal with sin very well, he have to clean you up, pay your sin debt, say, okay, yeah, let's, let's, get, rid, let's get rid of all that sin. And now you can be with me and the father. If you read Revelation, you get him and the father. Because the father ain't going to deal with you with all that sin all over you. Is it that simple? Well, you don't want him to deal with you. you. You don't want that. So before he even lets you get in front of the Father, he's got to redeem you and blot out your sin. Amen? Amen. It's not that hard to understand, I promise you. It is really not that hard to uh, understand. Let's, you know, let, let, let's go. Let's go. People don't want to, they, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Let's go to Psalm 16. Psalm 16. You're just going back about four books. Psalm 16. That's what he blotted out. He didn't blot out the Ten Commandments. He blotted out your sin. Okay? 
Yeah. Now, if you want your sin, then he'll blot you out. If you want to continue in what you want to do. But Psalm 16, brother, you in, you in Psalms? Yes, sir. All right, 16, read verse 4 for me, brother. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Yes, it will. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, mm -hmm. nor take up their names into my lips. He's saying, I am not for to worship this other God. I'm not going after those other guys. See, these other people, their, their, their sorrows will be multiplied. Okay? Their sorrows will be multiplied, those that go after other gods. I'm not going to do that. Okay? We're still in Psalm. Go to Psalm 115, brother. Go to Psalm 115. Okay? Let's look at this. Psalm 115. Okay? And when you get there, brother, pick it up at verse 1. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, mm -hmm. but unto thy name give glory for yes, thy sir. mercy and for thy truth's sake. Yes, sir. Wherefore should the heathen say, where is now their God? And we're not, see, we're not showing the heathen anything when we just worship all this paganism. Every time someone has a beef against Christianity, it's usually against the false teaching of Christianity. I'm, not ta I'm talking about people who don't follow Christianity, Christianity and they criticize Christianity. They make a real good case. They make a real good case because they say, oh, well, you're supposed to be Christian. Why do you do this? You're supposed to be Christian. Why do you do that? That kind of thing because Christianity is a perversion of what the Bible actually says. I'm sorry. Okay? Now, I understand, oh, brother, you, you're, not, you're not Christian. Okay, if you refer to first century, first, second century Christianity, then okay, yeah, I'll accept that. But if you're talking about what's accepted, in modern day society that passes as Christianity, no. No, I'm not that. I don't, I, I don't believe that. Because if I was that, I wouldn't be talking against Easter right now, now would I? So I'm not that. But go ahead, brother, verse 3. But our God is in the heavens. Yes. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Mm -hmm. Their idols are silver and gold mm -hmm. and the work of men's hands. That is the idols today, brothers and sisters. That is the idols that we serve today. Go ahead. They have mouths, but they speak not. Mm -hmm. Eyes have they, but mm -hmm. they see not. You can't tell anybody anything. Go ahead. They have ears, but they hear not. Mm -hmm. Noses have they, but they smell not. Mm -hmm. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but mm -hmm. they walk not. Neither speak they through their, their throat. Man, we're just dumb, derided, chided, dormant, docile. That's what's going on here. You cannot get the truth in. You cannot even, you can't spoon feed the truth to, to, to some people. They don't want to hear it. They are married to their tradition. They're just not going to give it up. They're just not, no matter what you do, no matter, they're not going to give it up. I'm not saying you shouldn't try and just kind of tell them, but just remember, brothers and sisters, let me go ahead and, 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 and help you out here. It's okay to tell them the truth. It's okay to show them, but it's not your job to convince. It is not. It is not your job to convince. You just tell them, that's it. They don't want to hear it. Don't weary yourself. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters. Continue. Eight. They that make them are like unto them. Mm -hmm. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Mm -hmm. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord, yes. he is their help and their shield. Yes, he is. O house of Aaron, mm -hmm. trust in the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Go ahead. Ye that fear the Lord, trust the Lord, he is their help and their shield. Go ahead, brother. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. Which are the Levites, but go ahead, brother. He will bless them that fear the Lord, mm -hmm. both small and great. Yes. The Lord shall increase you more and more, mm -hmm. you and your children. Yes. Ye are blessed of the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Yes. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, mm -hmm. but the earth hath he given to the children of men. Yes, that's who run in the world. It's not hard for you guys to believe that the wicked is running the world right now, right? That's not too hard to swallow. That's, that's pretty much what it is, okay? So he's giving it over to the children of men, okay? That, that, so, that, so there's nothing wrong with what was said right there. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth had been given to the children of men. So when next time an atheist walks around and talking about, well, you know, well, if there's a God, how come there's so much death and suffering in the world? You take them right here. Well, because the earth belongs to man right now. 
Now my God's going to come back and redeem it, but he hadn't come back yet the second time. The world has been given over to the wicked. My Bible says that. It's been given over to the wicked. So it's no great mystery to me as why there's some wars and pestilence and we see all kinds of brutality and all sorts of atrocities that happen in this world. It's no surprise because the God I serve already said all that was going to happen, even today. Go ahead, brother. The dead praise not mm -hmm. the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. Yep. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth mm -hmm. forevermore. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what we need to understand. That's what we're talking about. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let's, let, let, let's read a little bit more. We're going to learn about our, um, our God. We're in Psalms. You know what? Go to 135. You know what? Let's just, we're going to stay in Psalms. Easy to find. I like people to be able to track with me easily. Okay, sometimes we do a little bit of scriptural acrobatics just to get around, but we're in, we're in Psalms. I got another Psalm reference, so we're going to do it. Okay, so 135, chapter 135 and verse 15. Make it nice and easy for us. Okay, Psalm 135, verse 15. When you get there, brother, let the Bible speak. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, yep. the work of men's hands. Mm -hmm. They have mouths, but they speak not. Yep. Eyes have they, but they see not. These are the idols. Go ahead. They have ears, but they hear not. Uh -huh. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. Uh -huh. They that make them are like unto them. Yep. So is everyone that trusted in them. Yeah, nothing. Vain, empty, can't do a thing. And the those who make them, they're just like these empty idol, vain idols. They don't, can't do nothing. Don't, you don't see, you don't hear, you don't understand. Just like your idols. Is nothing. They are nothing to me. Okay? Nothing to me. So we're going to go ahead and look at that. And let's go. Since we're talking about they can't save you, can't do anything, go to Isaiah 45. Just about four books ahead. Go about four books ahead. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. Read one verse. Isaiah 45. Okay, when you get there, brother, go ahead and read. 45 and 1? Oh, 45, I'm sorry, I didn't even tell you. To, uh, 20, 45 20. and 20, go ahead. Assemble yourselves and come. Mm -hmm. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. Mm-hmm. They have no knowledge that set up the wood of their graven image mm -hmm. and pray unto a God that cannot save. Pray unto a God that cannot save. Did y'all catch that? Then they set up these idols and you pray unto a God that cannot save. Okay? Now, speaking of the same thing, go to Jeremiah real quick, which is the next book forward. Go to Jeremiah. Okay? Jeremiah 11, one book forward. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 11, and we're going to read verse 12. When you get there, brother, go ahead and get it. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go mm -hmm. and cry unto the gods un unto whom they offer incense, mm -hmm. but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Oh, so again, vain God, idolatry cannot save you. We read this in more than one place. It can't save you. You're going to pray to a God that you set up. He can't save you. Period. Not going to happen. Is that becoming abundant, abundantly clear, guys? So, okay, so we're still in Jeremiah. Go, go to Jeremiah 7. Go to chapter 7. I, I, I want to structure this in a way that everything's easy to find. So, Jeremiah chapter 7, and give me verse 18. Let's see how the Lord feels about this. Go ahead, Je Jeremiah 7, chapter, uh, verse 18. Chapter 7, verse 18. Go ahead, brother. The children gather wood, mm -hmm. and the fathers kindle the fire, mm -hmm. and the women knead their dough mm -hmm. to make cakes to the queen of heaven. What? Go ahead. And to pour out drink offerings mm -hmm. unto other gods, mm -hmm. that they may provoke me to anger. So if you worship other gods, how does the Lord feel about that? Angry. Provokes him to anger. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Yep. That's what it says. Provokes him to anger. 19. 
do they provoke me to anger, mm -hmm. saith the Lord? Mm -hmm. Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? They're, confu they're confusing themselves. Yeah, they do provoke me to anger, but they're confusing themselves. You, don't, you can't tell me from these other gods? You can't tell me from the Queen of Heaven? You can't tell me from Ishtar and Astarte and Tammuz? You can't tell me from that? You, you just, your, your own confusion. You can't tell me from that? Okay, so let's look at this. Um, Habakkuk, we don't go there that much. Let's go to Habakkuk, okay? And that's up probably about eight books forward. And that's just a guesstimate. Yeah, about 10 or 11 books forward. So Habakkuk, Habakkuk. We're going to go to chapter 2 in Habakkuk. Okay. And are you in Habakkuk, brother? Yes, sir. Chapter 2. Let's pick it up at verse 14. 14. And when you get there, brother, go ahead. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. Yes. As the waters cover the sea. Go ahead. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, mm -hmm. that puttest thy bottle to him, mm -hmm. and maketh him drunken also, mm -hmm. that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Go ahead, brother. Thou art filled with the shame for glory. Mm -hmm. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. Yes. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee, mm -hmm. and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. On thy glory. Go to drop to verse 18, brother. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? Yes. What profit does you, if you're the one who made this graven image, what does it profit you? Go ahead. The molten image mm -hmm. and a teacher of lies. You have teachers of lies and they're going to do a whole lot of lying tomorrow in church. Go ahead. That the maker of his work trusted therein to make dumb idols. To make dumb idols. To make dumb idols. That's what they do. To make dumb idols. But read 19, brother. Go ahead. Read. Woe well, unto him that saith to the wood, mm -hmm. awake to the dumb stone, arise. Mm -hmm. It shall teach. Yeah. These idols are going to teach you. You know the one you made? Then it's going to turn around and teach you. Go ahead. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, mm -hmm. and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. It's not alive. It's only alive in your mind. Okay? It's only alive in your mind. There is no breath in them at all. No life in them at all. That's what it says. Okay, that's what we have to understand. Let's go to uh, Leviticus 19 real quick. Leviticus 19. Idolatry is all over the Bible, right? Sure. I mean, we're seeing it up and down, left and right. No idolatry. Leviticus chapter 19. Okay. All right. So Leviticus 19. Pick it up at verse one, brother. Let's let's just let's just get to this uh, idolatry. Verse one. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, yep. and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, mm -hmm. for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Yes. Ye shall fear every man his mother mm -hmm. and his father, mm -hmm. and keep my Sabbaths. Yes. I am the Lord your God. Yes, sir. Turn ye not unto idols. Turn ye not unto idols. Go ahead. Nor make to yourselves molten gods. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord your God. Yes. That's, that, that's pretty clear, isn't it? It's, it's not that hard to understand. It really isn't. Just turn from idols. Don't make molten images. Okay? We still have a little bit more. Okay? Because if you want to turn to idols, go, go to Isaiah, brother. This, this, this here what you got right here. You want to go to idols. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah. Okay, so Isaiah 57. Okay. 
57. Isaiah 57. All right, and let's read, let's go over here and read real quick, uh, 13. Okay. 57 and 13. Thank you, brother. Okay, 57 and 13. Go ahead and read. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. Mm-hmm. But the wind shall carry them all away. Mm-hmm. Vanity shall take them. Vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall mm -hmm. possess the land mm -hmm. and shall inherit my holy mountain. Okay, that inherit a holy mountain. So he said, but when you cry out, you know, let the companies de deliver you. Okay, let the companies save you. Okay, but the wind shall carry them all away. So you're going to get blown away and vanity shall take all this is for nothing. Okay, you're doing all this weeping and wailing and stuff. That didn't The prophets of Baal, they did all this weeping and wailing for nothing. Mm -hmm. For nothing. Okay. But let me tell you what I, let, let, let me tell you what idolatry will get you when we go right back to 1 Corinthians real quick 6. 1 Corinthians 6. And we're going to start wrapping this thing up. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse Let's see where are we? 1 Corinthians 6 Make sure I'm in First Corinthians chapter six and verse. Let's go to verse um, seven. First, First Corinthians six, verse seven. Go ahead, brother. Now, therefore, there is utterly a fault among you, mm -hmm. because ye go to law one with another. Mm -hmm. Why do ye not rather take wrong? Mm -hmm. why, why don't you just t accept responsibility for yourself? Or go ahead. Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Go ahead. Nay, ye do wrong yep. and defraud, and that your and that your brethren. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So let's see what idolatry, along with other stuff, going to get you. Go ahead. Be what? Be not deceived. Yep. Neither fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, nope. nor adulterers, nope. nor effeminate, nope. nor abusers of themselves mm -hmm. with mankind, nope. nor thieves, Go ahead. nor covetous, mm -hmm. nor drunkards, mm -hmm. nor revilers, nope. nor extortioners mm -hmm. shall inherit the kingdom of God. None of the And they said idolaters in there too, right? Yes. You don't get in. You want to worship another God? You don't get in the kingdom of God. There's a law. It's that simple, yeah. You can't be a fornicator. You can't be an adulterer. You can't be an adulterer. You can't be effeminate or homosexual. You can't be an abuser of yourselves with mankind. You can't be a thief. You can't covet. Sounds like laws to me. This will sound like something I find in the Old Testament saying you can't do. Yes, sir. I mean, that is not a stretch, is it? No. That, that, that's what it sounds like. But it says in 11, you read, read 11. He, there's an exception. Here you go. Go ahead. But 11, what is that? And such were some of you. See, some of you were like that. Go ahead. But ye are washed. Mm -hmm. But ye are sanctified. You are set apart. Go ahead. But ye are justified in the name of the Lord mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. and by the Spirit of our God. Yes, there you go. That's what we're talking about. But you are justified. So let's go on. Let's keep on. Let's keep it pushing. All right. So we can start wrapping this up. Let's go on over to... Ezekiel 20, so we can start wrapping this thing up. So idolat idolaters are not going to get in, so says the Lord. That's in the Bible. Ezekiel 20. Okay. Okay, Ezekiel 20. And let's start at verse 30, 30 and 31. Go ahead. Wherefore, say unto the house of Israel, mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. Are you polluted after the manner of your fathers? Mm -hmm. And commit ye, commit ye whoredom after their abominations? Because they were very idolatrous. Go ahead. 
For when ye offer your gifts, mm -hmm. when you make your sons to pass through the fire, no sacrifice, go ahead. Ye pollute yourselves with all your idols. Yes. Even unto this day. You're still doing it. Go ahead. And shall I be inquired of by you, mm -hmm. O house of Israel? Yes. As I live, saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. I will not be inquired of by you. You don't get to ask me nothing. Am I going to be inquired by you? You going to get to question me? And you have all this idolatry your father's doing and you're still doing it. You're still being idolatrous and you want to question me. I will not be inquired by you. Not going to happen. It's, it's, it's really that simple. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel, as I live it, as I stand here, as I live and breathe, as, I'm, as I live it, said the Lord God. I will not be inquired of by you. You don't get to question me. You are the one committing abomination. That's what we have to understand, brother. That's what we're dealing with, brothers and sisters. Okay, I said that was Ezekiel. Let's go to Isaiah so we can go ahead and close this thing out. Okay, I'm going to go to Isaiah 57 so we can close this thing out. Isaiah 57. I wonder if we read that one already. Isaiah 57. Let's see if we read that already. Yeah, we did that one. 57, 13? Yes. Okay, so no problem. No problem. Let's do this. Let's, these last two places, we're going to go ahead and throw this in because we got plenty of scripture. Go to Matthew 12 for me real quick. Because we want to we, we, we deal with this whole Easter thing and you know, we had Good Friday yesterday, and tomorrow's supposed to be Easter. So let's look at it. What's good about it? Yeah, let, yeah, let, yeah let's, see, let's see what's so good about it. So let's go to Matthew 12, verse 38, okay? We're going to go Matthew 12. We're going to start at 38 and end at 40, well, after we read 40, okay? Matthew 12, you there, brother? Yes, sir. Let the Bible speak. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, mm -hmm. Master, we should... We would see a sign from thee. Oh, sure. Let me go ahead and prove myself to you. Okay, go ahead. 39. But he answered and said unto them, mm -hmm. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh, seeketh after a sign. Go ahead, brother. And there shall no sign be given to it. Come on. But the sign of the prophet Jonas. Okay, well, we all know what that sign was, the prophet Jonas. We do know. But nobody ever goes back. But see, y'all know we go here a little, there a little, okay? So you can't say we don't go back and take a look, but I want you to finish that, brother. He said, but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Now, this is a description, okay? Don't forget that. This is a description. This is not just a little, oh, well, you know, you heard about Jonah, and, you know, I'm going to kind of sort of do that. Come on. This is an exact, this is something he don't mind you go back looking at to see exactly what happened, okay? So he said, but the, but the sign of Jonas the prophet, verse 40, for as Jonas was three days and mm -hmm. three nights in the whale's belly, yes. so shall the Son of Man be three days uh -huh. and three nights uh -huh. in the heart of the earth. Three days and three nights. We know that that's 72 hours now, don't we? Because he said days and nights, right? He didn't say, oh, I'm going to be three days in the heart of the belly and then stop right there. He said, no, three days, three nights. So we need to be three days and three nights. Okay, very simple, very clear, no deception there. Three days and three nights, not changing anything. But you got some people out there want to change something and be like, well, you know, back then, uh, 12 hours was a day. What? S what? Excuse me? Three days, three nights. Okay, it, what, it, day and night is a 24-hour period. Always has been. A 24-hour period, okay? Three days, three nights, 72 hours, okay? If you want to cut it in half, three hours a day, I mean, 12 hours a day time and 12 hours a night time. And we know depending on the part of the year, you know, one is more than the other, but it's still 24 hours. That doesn't change. 24 hours. And he said, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So go to Jonah 1. Jonah 1. Since he mentioned it, we might as well go back there and take a look. Now, here's the interesting thing. When they talked about scripture and stuff back then, it was only one thing they were talking about. Were they talking about Paul's letters? Nope. No, it couldn't, couldn't have been that, right? I mean, couldn't have been that. 
So when he said that, the prophets Jonah, they immediately thought Old Testament, the scriptures, which they didn't call it Old Testament at the time. They just call it the scriptures. OK, it was just the scriptures. So um, so don't get married to that term, Old Testament, New Testament. That's just to throw you off. That's just to give you some division. OK, we know the Bible is one. <laughs> Anything. Scriptures. Yeah. And the scripture said, and the scripture said, that's what they say. Isaiah, Jonas, Daniel, all that. Scripture, scripture, scripture. So Jonah 1, okay, chapter 1, and we're going to go all the way down to verse 17, brother. Go ahead. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to mm -hmm. swallow up Jonah, mm -hmm. and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three mm -hmm. days and three nights. That's where Christ got it from, three days and three nights. Not a couple of lunch breaks, okay? Not a fortnight, none of that. Three days, three nights, very clear, same 24-hour period, okay? So that's what we have to understand. So the question is, and I'm going to leave you with this, since you want to celebrate, you know, your Easter and everything, and you say, oh, he died on Good Friday, and he rose on Resurrection Sunday and stuff all like that. How do you get 72 hours out of Friday night, all day Saturday, and wasn't there on Sunday morning? Give me 72 hours. How do you do that? Yeah, brother, what you got? Uh, Daniel, can I read Daniel 926? Go ahead, 926. And after three score and two weeks, shall uh -huh. Messiah be cut off. Who that? Messiah? Okay, but, we got the right person. Go ahead. But not for himself. Not for himself. So Jesus didn't die for himself, right? Okay, go ahead. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city uh -huh. and the sanctuary. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And unto the end of war, desolations are determined. Yes, talking about 70 AD, but go ahead. And he shall... And he, the Messiah, uh -huh. shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. For one week, go ahead. And in the midst of the week, uh -huh. he shall cause the sacrifice and uh -huh. oblation to cease. And for overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Wow. Even until the consumption and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Interesting. See, so we learned a couple of things. He's going to, one, he, he's not going to die for himself. Call the Messiah. Okay. And. In the midst of a week, and we, are, we know that it's literal and it's prophetic. And we can prove that when we go to Jacob, when he got Leah. He worked how long for Leah? Seven years? Okay. No, I mean, I mean, we know he was working for Rachel, but we know he got duped. So yeah. after how long did he get Leah? Seven years, right? Seven years, right? And then what did her parent, uh, what did her dad say? It's our custom. It's our custom. You know, yeah, the oldest can't, you know, be married last. So if you want Rachel fulfill her week. Now did he now did he work for Rachel for seven days or seven more years? Prophetic, okay? So there is precedence there, okay? Prophetic. So we already know. So in the midst of the week, oh, also, Jesus' ministry, a ministry by all scholars, by all accounts, said it was about three and a half years, right? Yeah. Half or seven years, right? Yeah. Works both ways. Yeah. So now let's go to a real week. Seven days, right in the middle of the week on your calendar is what day? Wednesday. There we go. Now, can we get 72 hours from Wednesday to Saturday? Uh, Easily. Amen. Because he said he was cut off in the midst of the week and in the middle of his seven-year seven ministry. Interesting. Interesting. But we're going to save that for keep the Passover the lesson. Keep the okay? So in the meantime, keep the Sabbath. And with that, search the scriptures and prove all things.